I've spent plenty of time on this show explaining my problem with studies. And there's nothing wrong in principle with the idea of conducting a study. Doing a study just means that you're studying something. I'm not opposed to that. The problem, as I've argued, is that so many studies use shoddy methodology in order to arrive at a predetermined conclusion. And then those same studies are used as ammunition and political arguments by people who haven't read them. But on the other end of the spectrum are studies that are entirely valid and reach legitimate conclusions by following the scientific process and yet are still a waste of time because they prove something that everyone should already know intuitively without any scientific study telling them. You have studies that come to fake conclusions, and then you have studies that come to foregone conclusions, self-evident conclusions. This week, the media is reporting on one that falls very much into that latter category, or at least I would have hoped that it falls into the latter category. I would like to believe that everyone already knows this and doesn't need any scientific research to tell them, but uh, maybe, perhaps it turns out I'm wrong. CNN reports, quote, Handing your baby a phone or tablet to play with may seem like a harmless solution when you're busy, but it could quickly affect their development, a new study has found. Now, just a brief sidebar here. I guess my initial theory has already taken a hit. The optimistic part of me, a part that is growing smaller and smaller by the day, would have liked to think that every parent understands that you know, giving your, getting your baby, your baby hooked on a tablet is most certainly not a harmless solution, nor is it a healthy way to deal with the busyness of life. But that's not the impression you get from the first sentence of this article. And reading on, quote, Having anywhere from one to four hours of screen time per day at age one is linked with higher risks of developmental delays in communication, fine motor, uh, problem solving, and personal and social skills by age two, according to a study of 7,097 children published Monday in the journal JAMA Pediatrics. Quote, it's a really important study because it has a very large sample size of children who've been followed by for several years said Dr. Jason Nagata, associate professor of pediatrics at the University of California, San Francisco, who was not involved in the study. Quote, the study fills an important gap because it identifies specific developmental delays in skills such as communication and problem solving associated with screen time, said Nagata, noting there haven't been many prior studies that studied this issue with several years of follow-up data. Now, I just want to emphasize this. Four hours of screen time at age one. Four hours at age one. Keep in mind that children at age one, I mean, these are babies we're talking about. People are plopping their babies in front of screens for four hours, apparently. But children at that age, they typically nap twice a day. So, you, you know, you might get three or four hours of napping out of a baby. But most likely, also, you're putting them down for bed like at 8 or 8.30, maybe earlier. The point is that they're only awake for seven or, hour, seven or eight hours a day, which means that four hours of screen time is half of their waking hours at the age of one. And this is what parents are doing, apparently. And here are the results of that parenting decision. Quote, the study measured how many hours children used uh, screens per day at age one and how they performed in several developmental domains, communication skills, fine motor skills, personal and social skills, and problem solving skills at ages two and four. Both measures were according to the mother's self-reports. By age two, those who had uh, up to four hours of screen time per day were up to three times more likely to experience development, developmental delays in communication and problem solving skills. Those who had spent four or more hours with screens were 4.8 times more likely to have uh, underdeveloped communication skills, 1.7 times more likely to have subpar fine motor skills, and two times more likely to have underdeveloped personal and social skills by age two. The potential harms of screen time on communication skills may have, have to do with children being robbed of drivers for language development. Technology use can take time away from interpersonal relationships that nurture social skills, since real people are more multidimensional than characters on a screen. Looking at people's faces is when our uh, brains uh, when our brains turn on to figure out how to interact with them. If children don't have enough time to play or are handed a tablet to pacify negative emotions, that can prevent the important developmental milestone that is the ability to navigate discomfort. Now, normally I'm skeptical of studies that depend on self-reported data, but that's because participants are inevitably biased in their own favor when self-reporting. What that means for this research is that actually the situation is probably much worse than what we're told. If parents are going to skew the data at all, they'll, they'll do it to undercount the amount of time their kids spend on screens and underestimate the developmental delays. It seems very unlikely that any parent would exaggerate the amount of screen time to make it sound like they plop their kids in front of screens more often than they really do. So the point is that the real story is even more concerning than what's presented here. It's especially the case when you zoom out and view the problem through a wider lens. Kids are, kids are put on screens, as, we, you know, as we've now seen, practically from birth, and they'll stay on them through their entire childhoods, hardly taking a break, hardly ever looking up to take in the physical world around them. 
It's difficult to find reliable estimates on the average amount of time kids are spending on screens, in, in part because this data is, again, always going to be self-reported, and the people doing the self-reporting are incentivized to underestimate. But even with that limitation, the surveys I've seen all seem to agree that children between the ages of 8 and 18 spend, on average, around 8 or 9 hours a day on screens. I've seen some estimates that say 10 hours. And that's just for entertainment purposes. It doesn't count schoolwork. It's even harder to find reliable estimates for kids younger than eight, but we know that they, they don't suddenly jump on the screens at eight years old and spend eight hours on them. Um, so we know that. And eight or nine hours of screen time is probably an extremely conservative estimate. Yet even taking it at face value, this would mean that millions of children are essentially spending every waking moment when they're not in school staring at screens. This is their whole life. And most of that time is spent on phones and tablets, not on the TV. The survey back in 2019 found that over half of kids in the U.S. have phones with internet access by the age of 11. 20% of children have them before the age of 8. That's phones with internet access before the age of 8. It was in 2019, so we can be sure that those numbers have all gone up considerably in the four years since the survey was conducted. And although plenty of studies, including the most recent one, have revealed some of the damage this is doing to our kids... No study can paint a complete picture. We're only just now beginning to see what that looks like, what the full picture is. As the first generation of kids raised from birth on screens, smartphones, internet, begins to reach adulthood. And the results are quite dire. Only getting worse over time. I mean, Gen Z is the fattest, loneliest, most depressed, most anxious, least motivated, least ambitious generation of human beings to ever live on the planet. All the statistics bear that out. They have difficulty forming human connections and relationships. Uh, they're mostly uninterested in even trying. They're deeply confused about themselves, about the world. Incredibly ignorant. Gender confusion has reached never-before-seen highs in this group. They spent their whole lives staring at screens. They never knew life without it. And that's having exactly the kind of impact that any rational person should expect. So why would parents set their children up for this? Why would you do this to your kid? Why would you intentionally put your child in a position where they will become totally addicted to and dependent on screens and unable to function as normal human beings in the world without them? Why would you actively ensure that your, ch your child has unfettered access to the internet? where he'll be exposed to all manner of ugliness and depravity and degeneracy, which he'll absorb and internalize during the formative years of his life. Why would you allow your child to spend eight, nine, ten hours a day laying around and staring at a little glowing box instead of going out into the fresh air and having a real childhood, whether he likes it or not? Well, as many of you know, I'm a true grill master. I love grilling up just about anything. Thanks to my friends at Cinch, my grill is never empty with propane. Because of this, I can uh, have whatever I want, whenever I want on the grill. Cinch is a propane grill tank home delivery service. They deliver propane tanks right to your door. Cinch delivers on your schedule. does not require any long-term commitment or subscription. Plus, uh, delivery is completely contactless, so you don't have to wait around at home. You can track the order on the Cinch app from wherever you happen to be. Whether you're grilling for the sweet baby gang, camping with your family, or lighting up your fire pit on a cold summer night, Cinch's propane delivery service ensures that you have the fuel you need to make the most of every moment. Go online to cinch.com or download their app to order. New customers can uh, get their first tank exchange for just $10 with promo code Walsh. That's C-Y-N-C-H.com, promo code Walsh. It's a limited time offer, and you must live within a cinch service area to redeem it. Visit cinch.com slash offer for details. Well, whatever answer parents might give, whatever they tell themselves, the truth is clear. I mean, they do it out of sheer laziness. And some will actually admit this. Here's one mother on TikTok explaining in the very TikTok way why she gives her kids tablets much. Hmm. Because they're annoying, she says. The, the, the video, she says, why, why would you give your, your kids tablets? She says, because they're annoying. Like, the kids are annoying. That's what she's saying. Uh, she's a bad mother, in other words. She, she, won't, she wanted to make a video to let everyone know that she's a bad mother. It was very important to let everyone know. Now, that video has 5,000 likes. Many mothers have jumped into the comment section to give their amens. Uh, one says, quote, LOL, I like your thinking. Totally guilty of this, too. Another says, they really do be like that, though. It's the only thing besides sticking their hands in outlets that keeps them occupied, LMAO. Another says, 
As my kid sits there on her phone and I'm on my phone, ah, silence. Another says, yes, I just bought the twins one. Many similar comments. And then there's this, only full-time parents would understand. Is that so? Well, I'm a full-time parent. I have six kids, all of them 10 and younger, three under four years old. Uh, None of them have phones or tablets. And I can guarantee you my wife and I have much busier lives than any of the women in that comment section, by a considerable margin probably. Now, look, we're not perfect parents by any stretch of the imagination, but the point is that parents who pull this, well, you'll understand when you're a parent. Yeah, you might judge parents for giving their kids tablets and having them on the screens, but when you're a parent, you'll understand. No, that's a cope. That's a rationalization. You are lazy and neglectful. You're more worried about making your kids shut up and leave you alone than actually raising him and helping him to become a good, happy, well-adjusted person. Uh, You're a parent who doesn't want to parent. And mostly you don't want to parent so that you can spend all of your time on your own screen. Okay, Your entire home life is centered around the screen. It has, it has, the screen has cannibalized everything. It has defined you and your family. You're not even a family. You're just a, you're just a, a collection of human beings living in the same house, staring at screens. Is this really the kind of life you want? Is this the kind of life you want your kid to have? What is the point of a life that is spent doing nothing but staring mindlessly at a glowing box? These are the questions you should ask yourself. And if you're giving a tablet to your one-year-old to spend hours a day on, then you really need to ask yourself this question. In the meantime, put down the screen. Take the screen away from your child. Take him outside. Play a board game with him. Play hide and seek. Have a conversation, if you can imagine. Read him a book. Like, do something, for God's sake. Love your child enough to pay attention to him for more than 30 seconds at a time. Takes a little bit of effort, but it's not so difficult as you think. It's worth a try, at least. Otherwise, you're canceled. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.